Let's talk about some common um, use cases. So how AI is currently used in enterprise, for example, like a security operation center. So that's a great, great question. And uh, um, as we know, with very large organizations, they prefer maintaining their own security operation centers. And with small to medium sized businesses, you have the SOC as a service model. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, so in essence, what happens is in, say for instance, in the enterprise world, we have large number of sensors embedded all throughout the organization. So yeah. all these data or log, logs from such sensors get aggregated into a, a data lake. And from, from that perspective, we, we have a SIM tool which is used by analysts mm -hmm. to go through these uh, the logs. And so on a high level, you have data, there's a data lake, so there's aggregation of data, and then there's a SIM tool which on a very, very high level could be categorized as a UI or a tool being used by SIM, SIM like a, a analysts to perform their tasks. Mm -hmm. So with SIM tools, usually you have these uh, integrations with, say, detection tools. So what these detection tools do is, say, you have your anomaly detection, there could be user behavior analytics, in which case the, the, the data leak or the data is used uh, by these tools to give out and, say, for instance, identify abnormal behavior or anomalies. And, and which, get, which can get transcended as an alert, which an analyst would like to view. Mm -hmm. From there on, we have the next phase, which is the orchestration. Okay, sure, you have an alert. Can, can some of these alerts be automated, like the, the response, in which case you have these orchestration tools. And what they do is they look at the alert and they have APIs to defensive tools. So they just perform like, the say, for instance, the routing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's an alert. This is how you can mitigate the, the attack or automate some of this, uh, the stuff, and then it gets forward to your defense. Now, from a defensive perspective, there's another angle. You have your NAC, you could have your firewalls and other solutions right. which are used to defend against attacks. Okay. So you just basically describe the whole workflow about <laughs> how to embed AI in the typical security operation center workflow. Yes, right. so yeah, absolutely. So on a high level, as we know, so there's a defensive aspect, in which case you have anomaly detection and should be have analytics and right. more. Uh, there's the orchestration, in which case how do you automate some of these processes. Um, from a SIM tool perspective, there's a, a, a lot of things can be automated as well with right. the analyst and, and the right. SIM tool. Right. Uh, from a defensive perspective, there's a AI which can be embedded in order to perform dynamic defense against attacks. And so there's a lot of things which can be automated from that perspective as well. Okay, wonderful. So I can see how AI can apply to that uh, complete end-to-end uh, -end workflow and the impact automate as well. Yes. All right, cool. And so, uh, so you mentioned the security operation center. So, uh, from technology perspective, uh, to protect different kind of solutions, technology because we have like things like AI, the IoT. We have cloud. We have so many network, internet, so many areas. So, can you give us some like some common use cases to protect those infrastructure or assets? It's a great question. So, again, there's tons, but I could elaborate on mm -hmm. on a few. One would be as we talked about anomaly detection. Okay. So, for instance. Uh, uh, anomalies are created from, for instance, uh, like a live uh, stream of data, okay. and they would detect uh, some abnormal behavior within the data. So right. now there are various ways in which anomaly detection could be implemented. One could be LSTMs, as we mentioned, right. uh, called um, long short-term memory, which is a form of uh, recurrent neural networks, which falls under deep learning. Right. And they could be used to identify abnormal behavior within, say, for instance, IoT devices. Right. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is the unsupervised learning model where you have data, but how do you cluster these data in a, in a meaningful way right. when la labels are not uh, available? By labels, I mean, for instance, uh, we don't know exactly what these clusters correlate to. Right. So in essence, we could, we could, for instance, aggregate user behaviors and user behavior analytics. Usually we have an unsupervised learning model right. uh, where you cluster different behaviors. It could be how uh, typically, say, a, a security consultants leverage their devices. Could another cluster could be how sales uh, executive performs their tasks. So those are clusters which can be uh, applied. Mm -hmm. And then there's another aspect where you could have some more form of supervised learning model. In which case, for instance, you have these clusters. But how do you make sense of these clusters? So perhaps what we could do is you have clusters and you have data. So you could uh, we could uh, label a few of the data and then perform some sort of aggregation to understand what a cluster represents. Mm -hmm. That's something which can be done. Now, there are some intelligent ways to uh, make sense of data when, when there's 
like in real world data la labels are very hard to find. Right. Uh, there's a form uh, which has been used called um, technical active learning, in which case uh, the alerts could be intelligently, uh, like uh, a human oracle could be used in order to intelligently label a small number of data sets, which right. would provide uh, meaningful uh, like understanding of the entire data space. Right. So again, that intelligently identifying a small number of uh, say data points, which would make more sense of of the data. Okay. So that's uh, again uh, within anomaly detection. Uh, there's anomaly another detection. another for technique, uh, Bayesian neural networks. In which case, usually with uh, neural networks, we uh, we don't understand the uncertainty against uh, say a certain classification. So for instance, if you have an image and if it's a dog or a cat, we, we understand if it's a dog, it's a cat, but we don't know how uncertain the mo model is based on the da data uh, which, is, which was leveraged to create that um, model. So now th this is a technique which uh, with uncertainty, it's actually used within uh, hospitals as well, where, mm -hmm. where you have say an alert and nurses, you know, identifying for instance, our end users looking at the alert, but then now with the confidence level, we uh, can understand, okay, if it's, uh, if it makes sense to uh, perform an action from this specific, uh, say, classification from machine learning model. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, that's a technique which is now being used within uh, the anomaly detection space. Okay, so, well, wonderful. Yes. And and also any other like a use case you mentioned the use of behavior analysis anomaly detection. So that's a great a great question. So again, we have the defensive perspective which we have elaborated on with right. uh, the anomaly with anomaly detection, and then there's uh, decoys. Oh, now okay. decoys are are, are used all, across most enterprise clients. In which case, what we could do is we th there are various ways in which AI could be embedded within decoys. One is once we have uh, hackers who get into the dec uh, decoy environment, mm -hmm. we can uh, identify their attack patterns and oh, okay. what they're trying to do, and then use a form of supervised learning to understand that pattern and then correlate it throughout the enterprise to see if there are similar attacks taking place. Right. So that's one aspect. But there's uh, there are other AI algorithms which could be used to intelligently place these decoys in a dynamic environment so that um, like hackers are more likely to jump into the decoys as well. Okay. So there's a lot of applications there and right. there's a lot of exploration which has already been done in that space. Um, now with the network traffic analysis, uh, it's a similar domain in which case uh, the techniques we've mentioned within anomaly detection still right. uh, fall in, in place. Okay, so decoy is like a trap, right? So it's like a honeypot thing, things, right? Absolutely. So when attackers, hackers come to the, you basically uh, direct their things to some place, like uh, you monitor their, their behavior, you yes. analyze their behavior. Absolutely. Okay, so that AI can really place uh, something uh, 100% in, in with the good thing with decoys is um, uh, they're, they're considered like this, this is a true attack so okay. it's easy to diversify like the, the regular us users with a true attack okay. in which case uh, that information can be leveraged to g gain some more insights. Right. So uh, the intelligence you learn from there can predict what the hackers are going to do or something. Exactly, and then translating that pattern or attack pattern all throughout the enterprise to see if there's similar okay. attacks taking place. Wonderful. Yes. All right, cool. And so looks like we already come up with some solutions or some algorithm in AI field and applied in various technology or areas right now. Yes. Right. But uh, I also understand AI is still in the early stage. Right, so there are probably a lot of things we don't know yet. So if we look at the future, mm -hmm. are there something AI may help, but today we may not have a perfect solution. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, so again, uh, keeping confi confidential, um, like we are leveraging some certain techniques to solve some unique problems within right. how security operations centers, uh, like analysts within security operations centers perform their tasks. So there, there are a lot of avenues uh, within that context to explore. Right. Uh, also, um, uh, there's a certain technique called uh, reinforcement learning, in which case uh, right. usually what happens is say you can consider it as an agent, an intelligent agent which understands, uh, performs an action within an environment, understands feedback from that environment to uh, better, uh, say, optimize a certain condition it could be to maximize rewards, in which case the agent learns 
from feedback from the environment to uh, to perform its task better. Right. Now that model could be uh, is, there's a lot of research already being performed in the space where uh, usually the the dynamic nature how do you model dynamic nature within cybersecurity? You have hackers and you have uh, defenders. When defenders optimize their tasks, hackers um, like find out another loophole or they perform something else to outmaneuver. Um, your defenders. There's a constant back and forth or cat and mouse game happening in that space. So how do you model that and perform uh, certain defensive maneuvers to outmaneuver a hacker? So reinforcement learning can be applicable in this space. Now our challenge is how do you model reward within like uh, within an environment we have we don't have full clarity on. Uh, so again, those are some of the challenges which are already being looked at, and uh, reinforcement learning provides a. a, a a significant boost as to how we can perform this task and we already have one of the top professors from the University of Waterloo's focus her focus is on uh, reinforcement learning and uh, game theory uh, which which gives us an edge so even though we know quite many things already but feels like there's still a lot of things uh, we can work on hundred percent and uh, I mean, this is just one heavy there's so many other uh, there's various uh, problems we have identified, which uh, and ho I hope to we hope to make some announcements uh, in the future, where uh, certain certain novel techniques within machine learning and AI in general could be uh, could be used to solve problems. Wonderful! Really look forward to that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you yeah. very much. Brian. Thanks. Uh -huh.